Hey, new friends. So we know some of you are expecting a warden overview, but we're going to be delaying it since the patch is fast approaching. And we wanted to start a discussion about the guard breaks portion of it specifically, or at the very least air out some of our concerns over it. I know there are a lot more glaring problems at the moment, like the P2P hosting or the class oversights, but a major change to guard breaks is about to come and there are certain things that need to be made clear about it since there are a lot of misconceptions about what exactly this patch will do. According to this post as seen on the official forums, they'll be reverting it back to its closed beta state. And so I'm going to outline what this change will look like and what will stay the same, just so that we're all on the same page. Between the two versions, there's no actual difference in timing, but the closed beta version did not punish you for getting it wrong. That means you could spam square and eventually one of the inputs will counter the guard break. The only drawback was that if you spammed it too early, you would waste some of your stamina. It made it a lot easier to make up for mistakes or to defend yourself against guard breaks. So that version of the guard break will replace the current one. Currently it requires that you time your guard cancel for the moment you're grabbed. You're basically punished for pressing it too early. What won't change after this patch are the following. Number one is the confirmed guard breaks. Those will still happen and I'll explain what they are later in the video, for those of you who don't know about them yet. Number two, you'll still be able to catch people in their dodge with a guard break, which people often associate with Warden's Vortex combo, but it's actually something practically every class can do to every other class. And number three, chain grabs or gank grabs won't change. You'll still be able to be chained by a group into a hazard or into something else if you're in your recovery frames. Okay, so that's out of the way, let's get into the confirmed guard breaks. Players use the word confirmed, first of all, to describe an action that couldn't have been countered, avoided, or blocked. Confirmed guard breaks usually happen after a parry, a block on a warden's zone attack, being caught after a charge, and catching someone in a dodge. These are just a few examples, there are a lot more. Recovery frames is used to describe the animation you do after an action, which sticks you into place, vulnerable to any incoming attack. If you didn't know why you couldn't fight back sometimes, well, chances are you were stuck in your recovery frames. Alright, so back to the guard breaks. For most, it's an issue of timing. You don't press the button when the indicator pops up, you press it a second afterwards. So you may or may not be thinking, that's stupid, why would they have an indicator pop up before you're supposed to press it, that's confusing. Well, there are a lot of games who use indicators more as warnings, not as precise guides as to when exactly to perform your action. If you want a way to get a guard break every time, visually it's the precise moment you get grabbed. And you can also use the sound cue, which sounds like this. But I guess these instructions will become obsolete very soon, so let's move on. Point is, it isn't so much about the indicator as it is memorizing a timing for something. The indicator is more of a warning, if you will. The actual guard break counter is up to your timing. I get it. When you get guard broken, it's different than the parry. Your character sits there helplessly, getting battered by the fat man, or shanked by the piss scrapper, and you really wish you knew what you did wrong. That shit definitely pissed me off at first, but I decided to practice with bots, practice with people who are learning too. I watched the how to play videos which are in the game if you want to go see them, and I learned the timing. Not to mention there's a ton of resources online, there's a lot of ways to learn this mechanic. I'm worried that this guard break timing change was made only just 8 days ago and already we're seeing Ubisoft adapt to the players instead of the players adapting to it. I might be overreacting, but this doesn't bode well for any competitive scene to flourish in For Honor, which <laughs> I'm not even competitive, by the way. I just think a competitive community is a lively and active community. There's a Goldilocks of difficulty every online game has to strike in order to keep both pro players and streamers around, and new players or those who play for fun. And I think Ubisoft has a chance to reach it, but now I'm having doubts. For example, I hate peacekeepers. Whenever I face them, I grit my teeth, but I never expected them to get nerfed. I wasn't even aware if people thought she was OP, but she was nerfed and it was chiefly due to the complaints against her, and I'm not entirely sure they were even warranted. 
Okay, okay. Let's get back into guard breaks. This guard break change will make punishing someone who's misjudged theirs nearly impossible. They'll immediately be able to make up for it by spamming guard break to counter, and in addition, it encourages people to turtle up. When you're caught doing your grab a little later than your opponents, it seems a little unfair. There is a better solution to it than the one they're trying to implement. So, have you ever noticed that sometimes when both you and your opponent try to grab each other, you'll be repelled and a blue light will spark as if you both failed it? It's sort of rare for this to happen, but what they could do instead of changing the actual guard break is increase the margin in which this could happen. That way we keep the timing aspect and both you and your opponent get a chance to reset the fight and try again. In my opinion, Ubisoft made a change to it for a reason. They didn't want it to be a spam fest to counter one, they wanted it to be more about timing. Guard breaks as they currently are can be considered timing training for when you have to move on to parries, and then after that, deflecting or countering an attack and so on. Timing is an integral part of the game and has to be learned sooner or later. Maybe the outrage against the guard breaks is caused by new players who are getting confused about the difference between a guard break when both players are neutral and a guard break that's confirmed. Okay, so I swear I'm getting to a point here. The overarching point in all this is that guard breaking is just about one of the very few things you can do to break someone's defense. And very soon everyone will be able to counter it. There needs to be more reward for aggressive play instead of reactionary play. More rewards for playing tricks and mind games on your opponents. As it is, good defensive players usually win no matter what you do. The only time they don't is because of lack of knowledge, and pretty soon most players will act like it's chess and know every counter move to every move. More aggression and mind game mechanics might help stave that off, at least for a little while. No player should have an impenetrable defense is what I'm saying, and currently it's completely possible to have one. I know, I'm hardcore rambling here, but I can't help it. I've been playing since the technical tests, so I got hooked pretty early on. This game is beautiful and unique, and with the right people, it's great fun. I don't want it to drown under all the complaints and rage. I'm against nerfs in general because of the whole loss aversion effect, but not only that. It's because there needs to be some sort of reward for a good play. Most new players enjoy variety and challenge, not a rigidly linear progression, and making it easier to counter guard break is doing just that. It's removing one possible move to make in combat since everyone will obviously be able to smash the square button when the big red flashy shield appears. So all in all, I think this guard break change might be bad, we'll have to see. I think Ubisoft could have stuck it out for another week or two and players could have gotten used to it. Even with this change, pressing it early is a bad habit. You do lose some stamina for pressing it early, and in a future update, stamina may become a lot harder to manage. What was already an easy thing to do, a high level play will simply not be used anymore. Unless it's a confirmed guard break, which again, those will still be around even after this change. And I think it'll be the thing people may go after next. I'm afraid that if Ubisoft buckled on this, they might buckle under the pressure against confirmed guard breaks, or really anything else the community deems OP. I don't think their solution is good enough. Extending the margin of error on two guard breaks being triggered in the same time frame might have been the better compromise. Okay, well, that's the end of my long-winded rant. <laughs> Please subscribe for more of this kind of content. Like it if you want. As you can see, this is one of those small channels and shit like that goes a long way. And as always, we encourage discussion. I'm personally ready to be convinced or to be proven wrong, so please leave your opinion in the comments. I'm always up for a good debate, even if it's something oh so nerdy as a video game. Anyway, thanks for watching.